So when it comes to working in TypeScript, one of the things that really helped elevate my knowledge is when I spent time learning more about generics and how to make um, functions that take in generics and do things with them. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is a scenario, which I actually ran into building out this little side project framework where I have this store function, right? And the store function basically allows us to, on any page, we can define a store type that has some data and we can pass that in as a generic here. And then later on, we get these methods over here, which automatically we get type safety by just going like this. We can see the things that are on this, right? So if I do a callback here, you can see if I hover over to-dos, this is already typed. And the way this is working is because of the generic I'm passing in here, the function under the hood is basically applying those same types to the set function. I also have a get function here. Um, I have a watch function, which also is type safe. Let's just dive into how, how you do that, because I think this is super important to understand when it comes to learning TypeScript. So let's go to a make store file over here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a type. So I'm going to say type store is equal to some object. And that object could have like a name that's a string. Maybe it has an age, which is a number. Maybe it has some friends, which is an array of a uh, type string, OK? So to kind of help illustrate what I'm doing, let's pretend like we're a consumer of this function or this library. And I'm going to say const store is equal to create store. OK, and what this thing needs to do is we need to somehow, first of all, pass it some initial state. So I can say name is Bob, age is I was like 20, friends is just an empty array. OK, so there's two things I want to try to do. I want to make a function that when I pass in some initial state, the function knows that this thing passed in needs to match this store type. And then not only that is that the store should have some methods on it, such as store.get. And I should be able to get any key from that initial store that was passed in. So if I did like this, I want to make sure if I do age that this thing would then be a number. So that's something that's really important when kind of like trying to build a library is start with the interface. How are people planning to consume your functions? So I'll say like interface. Um, and then down here, we will actually make the uh, the library or the function or whatever. That's kind of a, an approach I've been doing with designing out this framework where like I pretend like I'm a user of the framework and I pretend that I'm actually trying to build out th these pages. And once I visualize what I want a developer to like have to type in to get this all working, I then dive into the library code and I try to add in that functionality. So now we're diving into the library code and we need to make a function called create store. Okay, so this thing needs to take in options, right? It needs to take in some parameters. So I'm just going to go and say like initial state. And for right now, I'm just going to do any just so like we're all on the same page that this thing is a function that you can pass in any type of object. And when you call it, we need it to return a method called get. Okay, so now we're like, we're, we're trying to make TypeScript a little bit happier. So right now it's happy, but we need to pass in a key here. So this needs to be a key. I'll just say any I'll say return um, null for right now, but we're going to go ahead and say like const store is equal to initial state. And then we're going to say return store of key. So looking at this, this code, I mean, it works. I think if I ran this, this would all work. We basically pass in some initial state. We, we store that inside some private variable here. And then we have a method called get that we can call to get back this thing. But now if we hover over age, it doesn't know that this is a number. So now we have to start applying some generics to this, right? And there's different ways you can do it. Um, since we have this external type up here already defined, I'm going to go ahead and allow create store to take in a generic. So I'm going to go ahead and just put these little brackets here and I'm going to put a, a T. Um, you can put whatever you want here. This doesn't have to be like single letters. I've seen single letters used a lot in the code that I've read, but you could also just say like T store. And maybe for this example, I'll just call it T store because uh, it might make more sense. So we have a function that can take in a generic. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and say that this T store has to extend. Actually, I can say extends and then I want to say it's a record of string and then any. OK, so now if I were to go over here and try to pass in like some bogus thing like ABC, um, it's still going to work because we have to take this T store that we defined and we have to change it over here. So now we're saying in order to call create store, you have to pass in some type of data structure called whatever you want. We're calling it T store. But the, the initial state that you pass in 
has to kind of match this interface here. So record string of any. So let's go ahead and add that back in. And now that's all happy. So we're a step closer to making this more type safe. One thing I'm going to do is let's focus on this get function. If we can actually allow it so that when we do double quotes like this and do a IntelliSense, it'll tell us that, hey, we have to use name, age, or friends. So that's kind of the first thing we're going to try to solve. If you look down here, you notice we have a get function of key of any. So instead of key of any, what this thing needs to take in is we're going to go ahead and just say key. So now that we define key here, we can actually set a generic on this, right? So I'm going to say key extends key of key store. Okay. So what this is basically saying is look at this T store thing, this type that was passed into your function and get the keys of it. So this is going to be name, age, and friends. And then we're going to say define a new generic type called key. And it has to be one of those three things. So now if I hover over this, Notice that we get age, friends, and name. That's pretty pretty useful, right? So now whenever someone's trying to use your store, they can simply just go like this and say, okay, well, we actually want to get, get the age here. So now again, you hover over age and it's already type saved. It tells you that this is a number. But unfortunately, if you do it for friends and hover over age, you'll notice that it says never array, okay? Um, which isn't what we want because if you look here, this is actually typed as string array. So what I want to point out is that we actually never pass a generic to this, right? So again, you can pass in a store type here. So now if we were to go over to this and hover over it, notice that it does have the proper type of this. So like I said, a lot of people will not name this like T store. They'll just do this. They'll just name it like a character. Um, to me, it's cleaner to read that once you get used to it. But I mean, if you're starting off, maybe the actual like verbose naming of the types will be easier. So let's try doing um, another function. Let's do a set function, okay? Again, we're gonna do the same type of approach. Let's pretend that we are a consumer of this library. I'm gonna do a store.set. I want to be able to do a double quote and get all of the keys that are available, but then I also wanna be able to set the value here. So for example, if I said age and then I said um, 40, I want this to know that this thing takes in two arguments. The first one has to be one of these keys and the second one has to be a number. How do we achieve that? So let's go down here. Generics will help you out. So inside of this set, let's just make it happy first of all. I'm gonna go ahead and say key is any and then I'm gonna say value is any. Okay, so now it's happy. It's not complaining, but if you look over this, it, it thinks that it takes in any's and it you like it doesn't give you that IntelliSense. So you could pass in whatever you want here. Like a pass in strings. Technically, this is correct in JavaScript and TypeScript land. Like this is not proper. You should only be passing a number to this. So how do you make these go away? Um, and before we dive into that, let's just do store of key is equal to value. So this is actually proper logic. So let's go ahead and just add generics here because that's going to be the, the way that we solve this. Well, we already figured out how to make key a type of one of the keys here, right? It's just, just generic down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then I will just change this to a K, right? So the set function knows I can select age, friends, or name, right? That's pretty awesome. But this one over here is still not type safe. We want this to throw an error if we're passing in a string when really this thing takes in a number. So what we can do here is in the any, I'm gonna go ahead and say T and then I will do a bracket and I'll say K of that. Okay, so now we get that type safety. Right now it's saying that, hey, this thing's supposed to be a number you're passing in a string. So if I change that to 40, all is good. All right, so now I'm gonna take it one step further. Let's pretend like we're kind of dealing with like a React state library where when you call set, you actually need to pass this a callback. All right, so again, let's try to refactor this. Instead of just taking in a value here, let's make it taking a callback. Let's make this a little bit more complicated, kind of like the React state library. Um, so we're gonna change this to a callback. That's gonna take in the current age and then we're going to go ahead and say current age let's just do plus one or something like that okay so right now this is not typed to support that so how do we allow this thing to take in a callback function and um how would we change this set function to make it work so for value here all i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and change this to be a current which is a type of that and this thing needs to return the same type here. Okay, and then for over here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, change this from value to callback, and I'll say callback. We're gonna pass in store of key. All 
All right, so now that's all happy, right? We've passed in a callback that knows that the thing that's currently being passed to you is a number, and the thing that you're returning has to be a number as well. If I try to do a string here, it'll complain. So let's pretend like we have a function over here that says like, I don't know, uh, we'll say the like header. And this thing needs to take in a store. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say like store. Um, and for right now, I'll say any. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're making a header function that takes in that store object that we created up here. Um, I might rename this to my store just so that it's not like a, a shadow variable or whatever it's called, an overwrite of the variable name. So I wanna be able to pass in my store to this header. Okay, awesome. But the issue, is we have any here. We want to get rid of that any. So how do we potentially type this correctly so that when I try to do some coding inside this, this function, I know I can do store.get, but I'm not getting any IntelliSense because I set this to any. So a great thing you can do in TypeScript is the type of keywords. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say type my store is equal to type of my store. And then we're gonna go ahead and type this as my store like this. And now this get function that we're calling, it has those keys, everything will be typed. You can call the correct set methods and you can set with whatever callback that you want and everything should be fine. Okay, so the type of keywords, super important to uh, understand. And then also another one I'm gonna throw in there for fun is let's say for whatever reason you wanted to get the return type, um, like let's say you don't have access to my store. Let's say that's defined in like some way other file, way, way far away and you don't really know, but for some reason you do happen to have this store type, right? So what you can actually do um, is I'm gonna move this down here. I'm gonna say type my store is equal to return type of great store. And I'm gonna pass in my generics here and I'm gonna say store, okay? Um, and I'm also gonna put type of in front of here. Okay, so basically take the type of this whole thing, which is gonna be a function, that returns an object that has a get in set. But then I'm gonna pass in a generic so it's more specific and it knows exactly what methods and keys it has on it. And then this will be equal to the exact same thing as we did earlier with doing the type of on this. But this is for scenarios where for whatever reason you're in a file that does not have access to the store, but you for some reason have access to the function that creates a store and you have access to the type. Um, this usually becomes even more handy when like Inside of this function, for some reason, you have to like go and use the type that's passed in and then get the return type of something else. I, I don't know, it's, it's not really a great scenario in this example that I gave you, but it is great to understand that there's this return type keyword. All right, that's all I'm gonna share in this video. I just wanted to kind of give you something that's a little bit more intermediate with TypeScript. Um, but I think if you understood everything I did in this video, like you should be good. Like you should be good for the most part because this is more than what you're ever gonna do when you're like just trying to build out a React application or build out a, a view application. Usually this is more like you need to define a custom function or library, and that's when you have to start doing things like this. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon, and like always, I have a Discord channel, you guys are welcome to join if you wanna find a place to kind of hang out and talk to some other developers. Have a good day, happy coding.